Hey guys, it's Avangel. Welcome back to the channel. And amazing news, I didn't even see this coming, but Asobo has released a new aeroplane. This is the Aviat Husky, the A1C. Now this is the most powerful version they make, which is a 200 horsepower light going engine. And as we look at wonderful out of focus grass, thank you default camera angle. Uh, the Husky was actually, doesn't look like it, it looks like a Super Cub to an extent, but it was designed and built in the 80s by uh, Aviat Aviation in Wyoming. And I, again, largely out of focus grass. So the Husky design began in the 80s and this is the first time I've even touched this aircraft. I've not even seen it yet. And, well, okay, so, oh, wait, an Asobo aircraft with an opening door? What is this dark magic? <sighs> this is kind of cool. How do I close this? Oh my god, I grabbed the hatch. Do I do I grab the hatch? Is that it? <gasps> okay, so a uh, quick thing. This comes with 10 liveries, all of which are on the wheeled version, as you can see here. But we also have the float, tundra tire, and ski variants. So for a grand total of £12, or about $15, whatever the American value for this actually ends up being, if someone wants to put that in the comments, please do. This is actually kind of looks good we'll have to see how it flies but um i'm not going to test the float version because the sobo uh water physics are interesting still but the fact they're releasing more planes with floats speaks a lot for the potential so let's get this aircraft powered on and take her for a spin and see what we're actually looking at shall we in fact no before that we'll go outside so detailing wise i'm actually very impressed with this they released a power solo which i honestly didn't bother with because i already had the third party one which was almost identical but this actually looks very nice the textures are good of course it works with default pilots the liveries are all very very nice by the way as you saw in the preview mention there's one of my current favorites the bird dog over there but this plane looks good and i i am blown away by the fact it has of course the openable door which is a huge thing anyway let's power on let's talking okay batteries on i've not even done any manual reading if there even is one here so i don't know anything about this airplane that's our pilot floodlight there's our fuel tanks i'm pretty sure this is gonna be a case of just crank her and go more lighting controls got the rear seat there okay what are we looking at here on the panel uh, okay, so just master, we've got lights, avionics, boost pumps, that's what I was looking for. Okay, let's make sure that's looking good. Little crack of the throttle. Parking brakes are applied. Engine powers up nice and simple. Alternator and avionics. Now, of course, we've got an avionics suite here. With Garmin instruments, we've got, of course, a digital attitude indicator, which is kind of cool. Um, a very big main screen, which allows us to either have the 3D vision system, which is very cool. Or we can go to... What's the one we're looking for here? Map mode. We've got a normal kind of Garmin-style map system, which is kind of cool because... Although, as much as these are now showing to be the Garmin style, I can't click on the airport and actually open the information on the airport. Which would be super cool. Because that's the sort of information that Garmin systems do have now with their touchscreen stuff like Garmin Pilot. Um, GPS release obviously lets us take that out there. But we can plug in our information data as we'd normally expect to. So let's turn this on. Let's set our transponder real quick. Electric engine, uh, digital engine instruments are very nice, I will say. Okay, set to alt mode. We're looking good there. Beacons are on. Nav and strobes are on. Confirm those are good. Okay, boost pump is going to be off. Do we actually have a TCAS? No, that's that's not. Could be that. Yeah, <laughs> can't be that. Either way, let's get a rolling, shall we? And take a look at how this baby flies. Now we're testing out the regular wheeled version here. As we mentioned earlier, this is the regular wheeled variant. Low slung little plane, but with the bush variant, 
I'm very excited. I'm just very disappointed they didn't actually let the liveries work on the bush version and on the float versions. Because that makes no sense. They produced this aircraft with 10 liveries. Liveries only work on the wheeled version. That seems slightly stupid. But what do I know? So our views have a decent looking up, kind of craning our neck viewpoint here. And people who want to know what the airport is, we're flying out of uh, Bella Coola in British Columbia, which is the Orbex add-on airport. Okay, we'll just pull forward to the run-up area. Let's see what other viewpoints we have. We have a slightly lower down one. We have our digital instrumentation one. There we go. Okay, looking good. Let's give her a run-up and see how she sounds. Let's get nice and close to the engine there for you. Sounds how I would expect. Not bad. Not bad. No smoking sign. Hope someone tells the engine that. Alright, let's get going, shall we? We'll enter the runway here at uh, Bella Coola. We'll back taxi and we'll depart. So, I'll give her a little lick of flaps. There we go. We'll just taxi back down here to the end. Turn around and go. Ground handling is very good on this aircraft. I will give it that. It really does handle very nicely. It behaves itself. It feels good to actually maneuver. I think this is going to be more than enough runway. So I'll just gently brake here. There we go. The tail drag is not parked until you're in the airport bar. Is an old adage. <laughs> so never assume you're going slow enough to actually turn a tail dragger. They can get very spicy very fast. Okay, so let's get our rolling, shall we? I'll go to about half throttle until we can get the tail up like that. Then I'll advance the throttle. Engine overspeed. Yep, engine is oversped. Interesting that it reads it out for me. Okay, we'll pull it back and we'll keep it in the green here. Let's give ourselves climb power here. Aircraft climbs very nicely, very responsively. We'll pull those flaps up, nose drops, give it a bit of trim, and bring her up to altitude. The digital re engine read. This is this is a level of, of glass I can tolerate in an aeroplane. So I have a digital artificial horizon or artificial horizon there. I have the option for synth vision if I want it. I have the option for the map if I want it, and when I'm navigating in the bush. GPS is super important because it lets me see the terrain and the, ri the rivers and mountain areas. And I can use it to navigate very easily when I'm not looking out the windows, which is super useful. GPS is a lifesaver in the bush. The electronic engine instrument saves me a lot of space in terms of having multiple small digital uh, analog instruments, but allows me to actually have all that information collated in one space, which is super useful. Okay, we can actually go through multiple pages there. That is super useful. I have to say, Asobo, I'm genuinely impressed. Does this get loud when I open the door? Yes, it does. Congratulations, Asobo. I mean, this is something that I'm surprised about, honestly. This looks good. It has functional door on it, which is none of the default aircraft have. I'm not sure what their reasoning behind that is, but the aircraft handles nicely. Obviously non aerobatic but that doesn't exactly matter for us. It's a bush plane. Now we have got regular tyres on. I'm going to see how short I can land it here at Bella Coola. Shouldn't be much of a problem. So we're going to go opposite the way we came into because we're running clear weather, so there's no winds to really consider. So we'll throttle back here. The digital slip indicator there is kind of cool. go let's bring her down a little bit a side slip it see how she behaves with this okay she does drop very nicely i like that the aircraft does drop down very quickly okay let's bring up power and we'll roll around onto runway heading okay so my speed is coming down very rapidly this is good we'll get some flaps out and slow us down even further now we're in flap range we've got trees to contend with here so that is full flaps deployed now. 
or at least two notches of flaps. Okay, let's bring her down here. A nice steep descent. There we go. Yep. Yeah. Keep it above those trees and drop ourselves in. Nice. That responded very well. I like that. That will tolerate a lot of abuse on the stick, which is exactly what we were aiming for with the aircraft there. So um, I touched down just after the actual initiation markers there and the numbers. So not my shortest, but very steep over those trees and first time landing the plane. It doesn't use a lot of runway at all. It's small, but it's very, very effective. Let's see if there's actually any more flaps we had there. I don't want to kind of throw any more barn door out as we're coming in. Okay, so we've got two notches. Very fast deploying flaps as well, which is really cool. That's full flap extension speed there. I am genuinely impressed by this. This is nice. I will actually go and grab the float version and take a look at that because we've got time. Let's take a quick look. Bush tires, skis, they'll be the same. We'll go check out the float version. So we're here in the Husky float variant at uh, Stewart in British Columbia. Now, unfortunately, the Ski, Tundra and float versions all have this one livery. Although I'm pretty sure we'll be able to port across the liveries to the other versions just fine. Although obviously without the floats on the texture, that could be a problem. Maybe that's why they didn't do it. It kind of seems lazy, but yeah. Uh, okay, these floats seem pretty big, but we'll have to see how it performs. But everything looks built very, very nicely. Let's pop back inside here and get it started up nice and quickly. Well, not anymore. Should have put the fuel pumps on, but we'll be okay. So everything is on that needs to be on here. We are looking good. Oil temperature should come up now. It is going up slowly, so it's coming up. We'll just give it a second. But the aircraft is definitely looking pretty nice. And, of course, we have a Sobo's irritating gear safety system on there. Uh, where are our water rudders? We'll just find those ahead of time. So our fuel selector there. Water rudder here. See what I mean? It's like it works with the battery on and off, but it should work with the battery off. But it is literally just a chain or a lever. It's mechanical. So our temperature is coming up now. It's starting to go in towards the green. We'll not move the aircraft till that is in the green for us, but I should give it a little bit of RPM just to help it heat up a little bit. Temperature's coming up. So the temperature's below working range, so let's leave it in a high idle for now. To allow it to just gain some temperature. Nice that there's a bit more complexity to this aircraft than just being a straight up vanilla, easy to fly plane. So pressure's good, temperature should be about to become good now. It's a little cold, but okay, we're green. Let's release that. We'll give ourselves a notch of flaps. We'll taxi out here to the runway at Stewart, and we'll take off straight out towards the water and we'll put it down there and do a quick takeoff so ground handling for a float plane is actually very good with this one it turns very nicely everything is identical to the other version of course it's literally just got floats or tundra tires or skis going a little quick there for our taxi this is one of the stock airports by the way one of the handcrafted airports which looks almost identical to orbex's stewart uh add-on wonder if they collaborated there Hmm, we'll see. All right, let's get this turned around. Temperatures and pressures are all looking nice for us here. Okay, so we'll turn this baby around. Very good handling for a float plane, actually. It's impressive. One, two, zero, zero. Set alt. Okay, we've got our flaps set already. Let's give us some power and get going. Yep, engine's overspeeding, so we'll not go to full power. There's at least headroom in the engine here, which should allow us to basically 
have extra emergency performance if we need it. Yep, engine's over speeding. I'll pull the props back a little bit there. So, gear up. Okay, gear is coming up. Gear is up. Set configured for water. Okay. Looking good. There we go. So we can go higher on the engine as long as we make sure our prop pitch is in compliance with that. So I can go full throttle here. I'll just keep the prop pitch back and we don't overspeed the engine. So we can get more performance out of it than we'd need if that's the case. So okay, fuel pressure's not quite meeting demand there. We'd want to turn the boost pump on. Okay, let's bring her in for landing here, shall we? Technically, Stuart's got a water runway directly ahead of us. We've got flaps already deployed. So we'll just keep ourselves straight here. We'll bring the nose down. And just descend here. We've actually got a little bit faster than we should with our props out. No, our props out. Sorry, our flaps out. I speak English, I promise. Okay, let's keep the horizon ahead of us. Keep a look out of our window as we come down. And it's not telling, yelling at me saying gear up for water landing. So maybe they've fixed that. Because it's annoying as hell. Okay, so we're coming down now. Keep the nose slightly high. We're not too high. We're about 30 feet up. Oh, no, it's bitching at me now. Okay. Okay, so not too nose high or slap. There we go. Okay. Touchdown. Keep the stick back as it porpoises wildly because of their physics. Lol. Yes, thank you. Shut up. Shut up. Wish I could pop the fuse on that thing. So we are down here on the water. And uh, our lovely openable door, which is a really nice feature. It seems like something so small, but it's so important. I Yeah. Let's put the water rudder down there. How does she actually handle when it comes to this? Oh, hello. Very effective. Very effective water rudders. Okay. This seems like a much better float model than uh, the Cessnas. Okay. Looking good, baby. Looking good. Well, let's go back in and we'll take her up for a takeoff here. So a little bit of power to straighten myself up. We don't want to be pointing towards a cargo ship or land. Pull the door closed. Single click will do it. Okay, water rudders are confirmed up. Gear is confirmed up. Let's advance the throttle. Okay, speed's coming up nicely on the step. And we'll let it pull back and transition away. And up we come. Very, very nice. Very nice. Not a problem in the world. This is really nice. I think overall, Asoba have done a very good job with this. It's a plane that fits the bush flying ethos. It's a more powerful uh, small bush plane than we've had previously. 200 horsepower engine will do a lot. It's got modern avionics, good avionics, and multiple versions with floats, tundra tires, skis, wheels, multiple liveries, more features than their stock aircraft have ever had. This is really good work. And I am genuinely impressed. For the price, go buy it. You'll enjoy it. It's a fun little plane. Nice work, Asobo. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.